too. So with all these movies under our belt, we decided to see the fifth movie, Resident Evil Retribution. Some Something happens and there's retribution. Someone retributes? So apparently. Apparently that's what happens in the movie. Do you remember Tenacious D? Come on, babe. Rise and shine. Let's get that beautiful ass out of bed. You want cereal? <laughs> Watch it, Tiger. Please get a room. Sorry. None of this is real. None, none, none of this is real. So we should talk about the opening of this movie, which is uh, the opening credit sequence is sl in slow motion and reverse, and it's showing what happened after the events of the fourth movie, right? Like directly yeah. after them, where the ship is being attacked by yeah. the Umbrella Corporation. So it's in slow motion reverse, uh, and it goes on for a good five, six minutes, something like that. So that happens, and then there's the recap of the previous four films. And that's another five, six minutes or so, maybe even longer, I don't know. Uh, and then we are treated to the slow-mo reverse scene again in normal time, normal speed. Mm -hmm. And then Alice wakes up and she's in a bed and she's in a little suburban neighborhood and her house gets attacked by zombies. And it turns out that that's a clone Alice and this is like a test environment. And then real Alice wakes up so here we are like 20 minutes into the movie and absolutely nothing of consequence has happened yet. Nothing substantial. A lot of false starts. A lot of false starts, a lot of people. And that's the whole series, like either people waking up and then something happening to them and then waking up somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But this one took it to a new level where it was like constantly. And so then the real Alice wakes up and she's in some little room, little white room or whatever. And she walks out and then she walks into Tokyo, mm -hmm. right? Like a Tokyo uh, test facility. Yeah, it's like essentially a fake Tokyo. it feels like a holodeck program. Yeah, um, kind of like that. But it's like, yeah, just constantly like waking up and now we're here. And then yeah. going into this room and now we're here. It's just like, yeah. Ugh. But yeah, a lot of inconsequential stuff, especially the, the clone sequence in the house, which I, I kind of got this vibe like um, that someone somewhere said we have to have like this, this series is getting too, um, cause, cause really this is from what, when, when did this first one come out? 2002? The first one came out in 2002. This and is a 10 year old series. Yeah. Which is, which predates the, the zombie revival, which yeah. really started with the Dawn of the Dead remake. Yeah, that's true. So I had, I had this thought, like all these, all the Resident Evil movies sort of turned into this like sci-fi weird schlock kind of stuff. And then someone says, Hey, you know, zombies are back. Um, the Walking Dead is a really popular TV show, and we need a scene that's like that, yeah. where someone's fighting zombies in a house setting, in a suburban setting, and someone's you, driving around. And I think that motivation like made that scene end up in the movie. So you could throw in the trailer, and and you can you can kind of pull off that vibe. Do you think Paul Thomas? Oh my God, I did it! I did it! Do you think Paul W S Anderson was told we need a scene like something in the Dawn of the Dead remake? So he literally just shot the Dawn of the Dead remake opening sequence. That's, it's the exact same it, thing. It reminds me. Yeah, there's that same shot too, where she runs out of the house and the camera follows her and kind of pans around and you just see chaos and stuff. And then she gets in a car and runs and then there's an accident and yeah. it's it's literally the same thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, copycats, uh, we need this, we need that. Uh, the world is is a f uh, deserted, frozen wasteland or whatever it is. So we need scenes in cities. We need scenes in this. Well, let's come up with this completely implausible and practical <laughs> idea about the, the Umbrella Corporation creating test worlds. All these memories were imprinted. My name is Alice. Alice, how nice to see you again. What the hell is going on here? We have you under all control. They used me to perfect the virus. Everyone I've ever known. Everything I've ever done is being used against me. Essentially, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, they have these bubbles or domes underground 
that are basically like holodecks, but they're not holograms. Um, uh, what, what's that movie with uh, Jim Carrey in it? Uh, oh, The Truman Show. The Truman Show, a yeah. fake fake environment fake in city, a bubble. Yeah, yeah, several blocks worth of Times Square, yeah. of Tokyo. Yeah, but the purpose uh, of them, as stated in the movie, is they, they, they clone human beings, dump them into this test environment, imprint them with memories yeah. of being people working in a city, and then unleash a virus to watch them die and go crazy from the virus. Yeah. Then they show that test footage uh, of, say, New York. They show it to the Russians, and the Russians go, wow, look at that. You, you have a virus that makes people go crazy. We yeah. can use that as a weapon. We'll buy it from you. Then they show the Americans the Moscow version, and they buy it from them, and yeah. vice versa, and all over the place, and they make money. Um, but the impracticality of it is you're building a replica of Times Square and you're, you have the ability to clone humans. <laughs> All of which seems much more advantageous. They would spend more money than Russia would spend on a, on a virus. Yeah. That can, you could dump ammonia into a water system and kill a whole bunch of people. <laughs> like, you can clone humans. <laughs> Do you know how much more valuable that is than a bioweapon? Yeah. We've got mustard gas. Throw mustard gas. It's been around since the fucking First World War. <laughs> and 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 it's just an excuse to have visuals. Yeah, a series of, of neat environments. Yeah, oh, Moscow, New York. Yeah. Uh, here, here they are fighting zombies in Moscow. Here they are fighting zombies, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But, but you have to take that with a grain of salt because you're watching this movie and you're like, this is the most ridiculous thing it's ever. It's really stupid. The logic of it just collapses in on itself. Now they can manipulate the world. We've taken over New York, Moscow, Tokyo. This is humanity's last stand. The beginning of the end. I'm gonna kill you. Good luck. You'll need it. I have to say, this is the first movie in all five movies where I kind of liked her character. What um, was her character? Well, they, they, not her character, but um, they added in a little... Uh, they did the, the clone sequence in the beginning where she wakes up in bed and she has a happy family. Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, this movie ripped off uh, Ripley, Ripley's character a lot because Ripley was a commercial space freighter yeah. worker and she didn't have time for a family and so she sort of was lacking all those things. Um, and then this movie sort of apes that, it sort of steals that where the Alice character, whatever that is, <laughs> wakes up and sort of like, oh, okay, I have a husband and a child and the little girl's got to go to school and she has a happy life. And then, um, well, that clone character dies, but, but she realizes, like, when the daughter finds her, the daughter thinks she's her mother, and, and it does sort of uh, emulate or copy that Ripley-Newt relationship, yeah. where it sort of, she sort of takes on a motherhood role and, um, and adopts the daughter and wants to protect her. And, I, and that has never happened in the other films. The other films, it's just her with a gun. Yeah. And so she sort of has this little girl with her, and then she wants to protect her, and she wants to save her. And from a completely flatline, generic video game character, it was like, boop, yeah. like a heartbeat on the, on the thing. Like, oh, she's a person. Yeah. There's a little bit of, little bit of something in, in, inside of her. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that's nice. And, and I was happy with that. As, a, as opposed to every other character in the movie. Mm -hmm. Because there's a, uh, a group of uh, soldier guys that are going into this facility to help rescue her, right? Is that what they're trying to they're do? They're paid by someone to get uh, Alice and the Chinese girl out of the facility alive. Right. Who's paying them? How are they doing this? Uh, Walter Murdoch. Okay, but anyway, so this group comes in to try and save them and there is not even the most basic level of characterization. It's not like there's, because they're all these big buff dudes, and it's not like, oh, this is the, the, the funny one. This is the, the you know, no nonsense one. Like, there's nothing. They're just people. They're just actors in a scene. As an actor, how do you prepare for a Resident Evil movie? How do you get into character? You remember your lines and mm. you show up on time. And you collect your paycheck. Well, movies are commercial business, yeah. essentially. Um, there's artistry to them on m many levels, but sometimes there isn't. Yeah. Um, just like the music industry, you know. 
The, the, oh, sure. Your new favorite song um, by... Uh, oh, the Taylor Swift by song. By Taylor Swift. Yeah. The, uh, Jay's A new lyrical favorite. genius. Jay's new favorite song is um, by Taylor Swift. And let's, let's take a listen to that. Uh, that is the equivalent of a Resident Evil film in musical form. Much like the Resident Evil movie speaks to socially awkward, fat, bearded guys who like to see violence, the, uh, the Taylor Swift song speaks to 14-year-old girls in junior high who just broke up with their boyfriend yeah. and want to say we are never, ever, ever getting back together. Yeah. Um, th there is an audience and there is a market and um, and it is a product. And that's essentially what this is. Uh, this is the level of artistry, 3%. <laughs> Umbrella is more powerful than ever. And we're the only ones who can stop them. If we're going to talk about the other films, I liked the fifth one probably the most. Uh, Which would you say that is faint praise? Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't mind this movie that much. Yeah. Well, it, it had a neat premise, like even though it didn't make any sense, but the idea of this underground facility with all these different, mm -hmm. you know, sections, like here's a New York setting, mm -hmm. here's a, you know, a Tokyo setting. Yeah. I thought that was neat. I, I don't think they did enough with it. And I would say that with all these movies too, yeah. like the third one, like post-apocalypse Mad Max world with zombies. Okay, cool. Oh, but nothing really happens yeah. in the movie. A lot, a lot of creative worlds, creative ideas, and but not really creative writing. Yeah. Um, but but this one, uh, the premise was neat, uh, more so than the fourth one. Which well, I, the fourth one didn't have a premise. I don't even remember it. The fourth one, they wandered around, and then at the end, they got on a boat. Yeah. But this one, like, it, it reminded me a lot of Aliens. Yeah. Not just the Ripley Newt analogy, but... But the whole like we're going into this thing and we got to get out before it blows up. Yeah. Which is every Resident Evil movie actually. But <laughs> but the whole idea they go they go to former Soviet Union area winter. Yeah. There's this massive concrete submarine facility where they build nuclear subs and um, there's, there's this elevator with the, the sickle and hammer logo and it's like a <laughs> massive place and yeah neat stuff and, and the the creature that that brain creature the the monster that looked like spawn yeah much better looking yeah um, especially compared to like the first movie yeah and oh so my God. so cool cool stuff happened yeah. in this movie but yeah it, it needed more humanity and um and really that's 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 the easiest part <laughs> Sweet ride. The the pulling the two guns out of her back thing. Mm -hmm. How many times did she do that in this movie? It was like constantly. Did, did she have guns or swords? She had swords in the third movie. This one it was all about the guns. I like when she had the swords. When she would hit people with the swords instead of the guns. And the guns they fire of coins at people. And the swords will hack. Is that people. is that what you thought was cool? Is that what you like the Resident Evil movies? I like them. I like the part where she hits people with the sword. And then the zombies come at her. And the zombies are bad guys. So she hits people and with the sword. What would you say uh, if we were to make another Resident Evil movie? What would you like to see in, in that film? I would like to see Mil Jovich go to outer space. Mm, the, okay. the, the Umbrella Corporation is doing experiments on the moon. Okay. And okay. on Venus. And Mila Govigich goes to a science base on the moon and goes into the center of the moon and there's zombies everywhere. Zombies okay. in space suits. Okay, we'll keep this in mind. The, we'll take notes of this. The zombies in space suits are former people on the moon. They're undead inside their space suits. Mm. So Mila has to break their, their bubble open on their head with a sword. And when it breaks open, the zombies head blowed up. As 
far as a movie goes, comedies. A comedy has to be funny. Sure. And if a comedy doesn't make you laugh at all the whole time, then it fails at what it does. The, the movie that we saw called Jeff, He Who Lives at Home. Oh, yeah. Promised to be a quirky, uh, dramedy, uh, and, and it didn't deliver on anything. Yeah. It, it delivered on irritating the shit out of me. <laughs> um, bad movie. This movie promises people fighting zombies and kicking ass and action scenes. Yeah. And to me, it delivers on that. The the fourth one didn't. The third one didn't. There were long, long stretches of boring shit. Yeah. And and but this one, as far as visuals and constantly changing the scenes and moving on and action stuff, it delivers. So yeah. I, I I think I might recommend it. It's like when you buy a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I better suck. <laughs> I better suck up the shit on your floor. And Resident Evil Five sucks. But overall, you could say without a doubt that they are bad movies. <laughs> well, that killed some time, but we really need to get some customers. Yeah. Hey, I wonder what ever happened to the greatest customer we've ever had. Anna Nicole Smith. No, I was talking about Mr. Plinkett. Oh. Stupid casino, taking all of my money. All oh, those lousy Indians, I'm gonna... Oh my God! I crapped my pants! And also, I've been robbed! <laughs>